That is the heart of destroying our relationship with God. That's why we become an enemy to God. That's why we can't come back to dwell in his presence. Now, if it were only justice, our fate would be grim indeed. But let's briefly talk about the doctrine of grace and mercy, the balancing doctrines in justice. God established the plan of salvation, as we indicated earlier. It's also called the plan of redemption. It required a redeemer. If you were to look in your dictionary under the word redeem, it comes from two Latin roots, which means to buy back or to pay a ransom. I remember sitting in a class at a Christian university as the only Mormon in the class, and the professor asked this question. If Christ gave his life as a ransom for sin, to whom was the ransom paid? The young man raised his hand. He said it was paid to God. And this professor playing devil's advocate says, Oh, so God put his own son up for ransom. Well, that wasn't very satisfying. Well, they ransomed for sin. So Satan got the money. No, they didn't like that either. I didn't dare say anything about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon because that wasn't well received in that setting. But I raised my hand and said, suppose the payment was made to justice to make things right. And we talked about that. And they saw the principle. A redeemer was required. And this redeemer had to be extremely unique. And that Redeemer, of course, was Jesus Christ. How was he unique? The only man in all of history to come through a mortal mother and a divine father. Out of that, he comes with two comb combination of natures. He comes with mortal nature, which means he is subject to death. He's subject to pain. He's subject to temptation. But he also comes with a divine nature, which means he has power over death, that he has the ability to endure infinite pain without suffering death, and that he lives a perfect, sinless life. Not once in all of his 33 years was there a single word, a single thought, a single action that was out of harmony with God's will. The only perfect being in all of eternity that we know of coming to this earth. Now, let's talk about the Redeemer and the law of justice. We said there's only two ways to satisfy justice. The one is keep the law perfectly. Jesus Christ did that. When he goes before justice, justice looks at him and says, I have no claim on this man. He has done nothing that he owes me. So he does not get himself in debt. Secondly, he goes before justice and said in the garden and on the cross, I suffered as though I were guilty of all sin. I was punished as though I were guilty of everything. Therefore, though I owe you nothing, by my suffering I have generated, if you'll allow me to use this expression, infinite capital. I have enough money now to pay for all the rest of mankind's sins. If you would turn with me to the 45th section of the Doctrine and Covenants, we see this imagery so clearly taught. As we know, one of the titles of the Savior is the Advocate. That's a legal term. We don't use it as much today, but what we would call an advocate would probably be a defense attorney, someone who comes into court and advocates or stands up for our cause. Now, in a normal courtroom, what is the plea a defense attorney makes in our behalf? Typically, the defense attorney says, my client is not guilty. 
Christ as our advocate makes a very different plea. Section 45, verses 3, 4, and 5. Listen to him who is the advocate with the Father, who is pleading your cause before him, saying, Father, behold the sufferings and death of him who did no sin. Is my defense attorney pointing at me? No. He's pointing to himself. In whom thou wast well pleased, behold the blood of thy son which was shed as a price for suffering. The blood of him whom thou gavest that thyself might be glorified. Wherefore, Father, because of these things, my blood, my suffering, my perfect life, wherefore, Father, spare these my brethren that believe on my name, that they may come unto me. And there is the key to the doctrine of grace. Can man save himself by his works? No way ever in eternity no man could live perfectly enough to bring about his own salvation we had to have Jesus Christ and that supernal infinite incredible sacrifice of his own personal life and then his suffering for all thus Jesus did not rob justice in his mercy but rather he paid it if you'll look at just two book of mormon scriptures with me mosiah 15 9 notice how clearly abinadi teaches this doctrine and once you understand it how clear it truly is mosiah 15 9 having ascended into heaven, having the bowels of mercy, being filled with compassion towards the children of men, that's his mercy, standing betwixt them and justice, having broken the bands of death, taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions, having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice. And then over in Alma 34, once again, Amulek teaches, in verse 16 and thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice and encircles him in the arms of safety while he that exercises no faith under repentance is exposed to the whole law and the demands of justice this is the doctrine of mercy and grace when the Christian world says do you believe that we are saved by the grace of Jesus Christ we should stand up and say yes forever, now, always, and forever. No man could ever bring about his own salvation or the salvation of anyone else. Where we differ is that Christ, having paid that price, can set up some conditions. And those conditions involve righteous living. They involve faith and repentance they involve being baptized and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost we could spend the rest of the night talking about the doctrine of grace and mercy but unless we understand it we don't understand how it operates in our behalf the Book of Mormon there are several scriptures but the Book of Mormon probably has the most beautiful explanation that shows this balance between our efforts and Christ's mercy and grace. Moroni chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Let me just talk through this scripture with you. It says, Yea, come unto Christ, that's our effort, and be perfected in Him. We can't perfect ourselves, He has to perfect us and deny yourselves of all ungodliness that's our part and if you shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness and love God with all your might and mind and strength then is his grace sufficient for you that by his grace not by our works by his grace you may be perfect in Christ 
And if by the grace of God you are perfect in Christ, you can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ. What does sanctified mean? It means to be made clean. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are made clean and no longer is our relationship with God in jeopardy. This is why Paul says we are justified by faith and not by our works. It's a wonderful, beautiful, balanced doctrine. The first thing we have to do to really bring the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ more into our lives is to understand that doctrine.